Hi, I'm David Jones, Crop Nuts Independent Agronomist. This is the very, very end of our trial site in Timau for the end of the 2018-2019 season. But I want to show you some very, very interesting observations between seed rate and row spacing interactions in barley. And it starts with this, a classic 75 kilos a hectare on a 7.5 inch row spacing. I don't have the results of these yet, but I'm going to wait and show you in a moment at the end of this video what we've learned in terms of yield, grain quality, screenings and thousand seed weight. This is a heavy seed rate, reasonably heavy, in a variety grace. And on the narrow row, you can see there's hardly any brome in there. And this was actually quite a heavy brome site. And it's really good canopy cover, totally enclosed, and you can just about make out the tops of the rows. Now, if I show you here, 75 kilos a hectare on a 15 inch row, all of a sudden you can see the space occurring and the weeds ingressing. We deliberately left the broadleaf weeds and the brome grass here, and you can see amaranthus. You can see quite a bit of brome in there. And if you look further in the canopy, there was quite a bit of volunteer potato in the bottom too. Now, if I move on to a lower seed rate, a real benefit, of course, with a 15-inch row is moisture conservation. Not only can you moisture seek by getting in deep and throwing soil away from the trench so that you can get down to moisture and put the seed at a safe depth, it also means that there's a gap between that row where you can plant and the crop has got time to build tillers. If it gets short of moisture, it sheds tillers and there's plenty of moisture in the ground between the rows. And the evidence is that in a lot of yield environments, it certainly helps grain specific weight, thousand seed weight and screenings. So this is 45 kilos now on a narrow row. And it doesn't look a great deal different to the 75 kilos, but you can see a lot more brome in there. On to the final one, 45 kilos, low seed rate on a wide row. There is a lot of brome in there. There is big gaps in there. And one suspects that this won't yield or will be the poorest yield of the four comparisons. All of these are replicated a couple of times. But let's wait and see at the end of the harvest. Give it 10 days and we'll hopefully have some very good data on specific weight, thousand seed weight, and whether it has in fact helped yield and paid off in our sacrifice that we have made of allowing a bit more brome to get established in the crop. So let's see if it's worth it now. So the results are in. And to recap, we have the wide 15 inch row on both a low 45 kilos and a high 75 kilos a hectare seed rate. We also had a narrow seven and a half inch row, again on a 45 and a 75 kilo a hectare seed rate. Were there any surprises? Not exactly. The lowest, as we expected, was the 45 kilos on a wide row spacing. Slightly above that was 75 kilos a hectare, also on the same wide row spacing. As soon as we took the row spacing down, even on 45 kilos, we saw a yield response, but the highest of all was 75 kilos a hectare on the narrow row. All of these were replicated and were highly statistically significant. I should add that we also looked at grain quality, so specific weight. We looked at screenings and we looked at thousand seed weight, and there were no differences between any of the treatments whatsoever. So, certainly gives us food for thought when you're thinking about a planter, your yield environment and where to go with this. I would have a good look at the Australian data, a good look at the European data and ultimately you've got to decide which end of the spectrum you're closest to. One trial, one season, but really get the row space to suit the system and don't get too hung up. Just plant well, right variety, right nutrition and row space will follow.